Hello everyone and welcome back to another MySQL tutorial. What we're going to be doing today is actually writing SQL code that will allow us to create databases, insert items into them, delete them, do all of that. We're going to start with some basics, so don't worry worry if I don't cover everything here. I'm just going to get into kind of the fundamental stuff that you need to understand. We're going to talk about how a database actually works, how tables work, all of that to make sure that you guys understand what's going on here and don't just see me writing a bunch of random gibberish and SQL queries. And then in future videos, we're going to get into some more advanced stuff like linking tables together, talking about database design, which is a huge part of this and you guys are going to see. And then we'll go into kind of like a maybe final project ish kind of thing or an example illustrating how we can link maybe a larger database base system together and what the design for that should be. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do to start is actually just discuss um, what how our database works and what it is. So first of all, we need to kind of understand what a database is and then tables, rows, columns, because those are going to be the words that I'm using throughout this series here. So in MySQL, we have something called a database. Now this is going to be my database. We'll just call it data. Base. Now, excuse my handwriting, it's hard to write on this tablet, and I also just have really messy handwriting. Um, so inside of a database, we have something called tables. Now, tables are kind of like a specific piece of information or like some kind of object. So you can almost think of them as like classes per se, if you're thinking about it in a code sense. And I'm going to, you know, do some examples to help you guys understand here. So in our database, we can have multiple tables. There's no limit to the amount of tables we have. So we have this database, it contains tables, and inside our tables, we have something called rows and something called columns. The first one I want to talk about is columns. So the columns have what we call headers, and these headers are kind of the pieces of information that's stored in this specific table. So let's say we have two tables, and maybe this table we call it person, and maybe this table we call it food, or something along the lines of that, okay? What we'd have in the person table is a bunch of headers that describe the person. So we might have a header for a column that is name. We might have another one that is age, and we might have another one that is the person's favorite food. So maybe we call that something like fave underscore food. Okay, so these go all the way down. And every time we insert a new row, which we'll talk about in a second, we're going to have these properties associated with that row. So these are columns. And now we talk about rows. So what is a row? Well, we know what a row looks like in terms of like actual sense, but what it does is it actually holds information associated with each person. So in a row, we might have, you know, the information associated with the person named Tim, who is 19 years old, whose fave food is, you know, let's just say pizza. So that's how these rows work. So every row is kind of a different entry or just different information being stored. And this information gets stored in its column. So we have, you know, the name, the age and the favorite food. And we're going to have we're, there's specific columns we'll talk about later and kind of how they work. But this is the basic underlying principle. Now food is another table. So uh, maybe in the food table, you know, we'll have three columns as well. Like this, the first is probably going to be, you know, the name of the food, maybe we'll have like the class, like if it's a fruit, if it's a vegetable, if it's like a fast food or snack or something. And then maybe we have like calories, or like something along the lines of that in terms of the health facts of it. So, you know, same thing in here, we could have an entry for food. Maybe the entry is pizza like this, the class, I'm going to say like junk food. Um, maybe that's not accurate, but that's okay. And calories, I don't know how many calories is a pizza, like 400 or something. So we'll do that. Now, when we have these databases and we have these different tables, what we usually end up doing is linking tables together. So for example, here, I've just put kind of like pizza in my fave food, but what I would actually probably want to do is link this favorite food to the column food and the entry or not the column, the table food that has, you know, the entry pizza. So what I can do is I can have like this entry here linked inside of favorite food. So that way, when I want to access information about Tim's favorite food, I simply go to this column here or go to this row in this table, I find, you know, the name is pizza, the class is junk, and it's 400 calories. And these are kind of the way that we link tables together. We're going to get more advanced later. But the basic principle here is we have a database, there's tables inside of a database, each table has rows and columns, and we can link those rows and columns together in a specific way. Okay, so now that we understand that, let's actually start writing some queries and talk about how we can create tables, create databases and all of that. All right, so this is where we left off in the last video where we created a connection to our database and we created this cursor object. Now, I forget if we did any SQL queries, but I'm going to go through them again here. What I'm going to do now is show you some basic queries and some basic commands to do kind of what I've just been showing you in that drawing example, creating a table 
creating some columns and then adding some entries in. We'll start basic, we'll stick with that. And in the next videos, we'll go to altering the tables, talking about some more advanced properties of the database, linking tables together and all the crazy stuff that you can do with MySQL. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first query we need to do is something that can create a table for us. So what I'm going to do is say my cursor dot execute and inside here, I'm going to put a string and this is where I'm going to create my first table. Now to create a table is pretty straightforward. We type create table, the name of the table. And in this case, we'll stick with the previous example of just having like a person be one of the tables. And then what we do is we put brackets and we list the name of the columns and the type that they're going to represent or that they're going to hold. So similar to Python, how we have variables that can hold integers, booleans, um, bits, strings. We have similar types here inside of MySQL, but they do have uh, different names. So I'll go through some of them. So the first thing that we're going to need for our person is a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say name, and then I'm going to write the type that the name is going to be. So the type of information we're going to store. Now, in this case, this is actually var char. And inside of here, you put the length of the variable length characters that you could possibly have. I'll explain this in a second. So we have a person name and the type is variable characters, which essentially means string up to the length of 50. So that's what this means when you do variable character. That's probably one of the most used um, types in MySQL. So we'll do that. We'll say name varchar 50, which means we're going to have a column. You know, 50 length is the max. The next thing we need is an age. So we're going to have an age and you could probably guess what type this is going to be. It's going to be an int. Now, inside of MySQL, we have all different kinds of data types that we can use. We can use small int, we can use tiny int, we can use big int, we can use int, we can use um, like large int. So what I'm going to do is actually use something called small int, which means that our values will be represented by a, a smaller amount of bytes. Uh, I guess, yeah, bytes or bits in memory, which is good because age is typically not going to be, you know, more than 100, especially if we're talking about, I mean, people in this century. So we can use a small int comfortably and know that within the range of whatever we're going to store here, that's fine because small int allows us, I believe, to save things that are between negative 32,000 and 32,000. Now, this brings me to my next point. We have small int, but we're never going to store negative numbers. So what I can actually write here is un signed like that, which means that this number here is unsigned. So we don't need to carry a bit to store the sign because we know that it's always going to be a positive number. So we'll do that. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to add here to my person, uh, we had food. I'm going to leave that out for now, but I'm going to add something called person ID. And we're going to talk about in detail what this is. So person ID and the type of this is going to be an int. We're going to make it regular int. And this is going to be what we call our primary key. Now, you probably haven't heard of primary key before unless you've worked with databases. What a primary key is, is a unique value associated with each row in the table. So, for example, we might have two people that, you know, are coincidentally have the same name and the same age. So how can we differentiate between them? Well, we need something called a primary key, which will be different for every single person. And we'll call that the person ID. Just like, you know, maybe we have a SIN card or I, I think that's what they call it in the States, SIN, social insurance. Maybe that's Canada. I don't know. Um, Whatever it is, we're going to have, you know, that. So we need to have some unique number to identify each person. And that's what this is going to be our person ID. So when you make it a primary key, that essentially means that every time you add an entry in, this key will be generated and will be different. And that brings me to my next point, which is something called auto underscore increment. So what this is going to do is ensure that every time we add a new element, into you know this person table here and we give it a name and we give it an age it will automatically generate a primary key that will be greater than or will be different from the last primary key that we had in the table so that means that we can access any person uniquely just by knowing their primary key otherwise known as their person id i hope that makes sense with that explanation if you have any questions leave them below be happy to answer okay so now that we've done that, all we need to do is actually run this code by hitting control B and we will see no output, but we will also not see any errors, which is good. So we've ran this MySQL statement now, and we've actually successfully created a table called person inside of our database. Now, if we want to actually have a look at what this person table is, you know what, maybe I'll leave these queries commented out so that you guys can look at them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a new command so that we can actually look at the table we just created. So I'm going to say my cursor dot execute describe person. Now what this is going to do is describe the person table for us. So what I need to do if I actually want to see some output from this and print some things out is loop through my cursor. So I'm going to say 4x in my cursor, print x. 
And what this is going to do is give me all of the output that my cursor got from this SQL query and just print it line by line because this is actually an iterable object which allows us to do that. So let's run this and we can see that we get this output. So we get name, varchair 50, age, person ID, and all of that. And you can see that all the properties we assigned with these different attributes are here. So it says name, variable character length, we have age, which is a small int, which is unsigned. And we have our person ID, which is an int 11, who just means it's a larger integer, that is a primary key with an auto increment. So that is kind of how that works. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how we can actually add elements into this table, and how we can retrieve them afterwards. So if we want to add something into this table, we've just created, what we need to do is run another command, which is going to be insert. So we're going to say insert into our table name, which in this case is person, we're going to put the name of the columns that we are going to insert. So I'm going to say name and age. And note, I actually don't put person ID because I'm not going to define the person ID explicitly, it's going to be automatically generated for me. And then what I'm going to do is say values. Now, what I could do is I could actually directly type the values in here. And I could, um, if I did single quotation marks, I could type Tim, and I could type 45. But we usually don't do this. What we usually do is something called string formatting, which allows us to actually pass the values in kind of a safer way and a better practice way to do this. And it also allows us to pass in variables, which you're probably going to be doing rather than hard coding in strings and adding in elements. So what I'm going to do rather than actually typing the values directly right here is I'm going to do percent %s, comma, uh, percent %s. We'll close that bracket. And then inside of this execute statement here, so this is not a part of the string now, this is separated by a comma, I'm going to put a tuple and inside this tuple, I'm going to put my values. So in this case, I'm going to put Tim, and then I'll put an age of, you know, 19, like that, and we can make this T. Okay, so now that we have that, what will happen is when we execute this command, we'll add that into the table. Now, the thing that we need to add here, though, is we need to actually commit these changes to our database, otherwise nothing's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type db.commit, which stands for database.commit changes. So when we insert this in, it will commit those changes and those will actually be saved permanently. Now, I'm going to add one more uh, command here just so we actually can see some output here. So I'm going to say my cursor.execute. Oh, actually, I don't want to get into that yet because that's going to be a whole new explanation. So let's uh, just comment this out and get rid of that for now. Okay, so let's run this, we can see that we don't get any errors, this worked fine. And now let's see how we can actually look at the different values that are inside of our table. So we've ran this SQL query. So let's comment this out, we don't need this uh, commit anymore. And now what I want to do is show you how we can actually get all of the rows and all of the items that are inside of our database. So we know our table is named person, we know we've inserted an item, how can we get that? Alright, so the command for this is called select star from and then the name of your table, which in this case is person. Now I'm going to get into more detail on this in later videos and a little bit in this video. But essentially what this will do is select everything from the table person and give it to us. So now I need to loop through my cursor. So for x in my cursor, we will print x. So let's run this. And we see we get Tim 191. So notice that the primary key starts off out one. And if I actually add another element in that primary key will be two. And let's show you what happens when I add another element. So let's, you know, uncomment this, let's change this person's name to be Joe, let's make his age 22. And let's run this. And now you can see that we first started off by inserting the person into um, our table. So we have, you know, Joe 22. And notice that when we do select star from person, we get both of our people. So we get Tim 19 one, we get Joe 22 two. And notice this primary key has automatically been incremented to two because we added a new person. So that is kind of how that works. Now I'm going to cut the video here because there's a lot more to talk about with these SQL queries. And I don't want to go on for half an hour in the first video. But in later videos, and the next video, we will talk more specifically about the select statement and some other things that we can do and some queries we can use on our tables.